Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vilo Vilo Vlog. But today, we're going to be blasting Infester to the depths in degradation. A massive fuck you from the Pacific Northwest by a group of teenagers to more sound studios and just death metal in general at the time. This is one of the filthiest, heaviest fucking death metal releases of the early 90s without the help of Jim Morris or Scott Burns or anyone along those lines. This is just straight up pus gurgling, disgusting, filthy fucking death metal. The way death metal was meant to be sound wise and whatnot. From the Pacific Northwest, just absolute filth. And the fact that these kids at the time were teenagers makes this even gnarlier. But this 1993 release to the depths and degradation, fuck yes, Infester. Grab the cassette off head split and enjoy that shit. I know it got a CD release, but I honestly don't remember who put it out, so... I apologize. I'll put a link below. And the vinyl's out on Martyr Doom Productions. It's supposedly a bootleg. I got actually yelled at by Morbund Records for posting my copy of the Infestor Martyr Doom LP because I was all stoked that I got a copy of one of my favorite death metal records on vinyl. And they were like, yo, you know that's a bootleg, right? But I was like, oh shit, sorry. Like, and at the time, they were like, the only official release is the head split release. And I was like, ah, you know. Well, I have the head split release, so don't kill me. But, anyways, hails to Dennis down in Florida for seriously being the fucking dude on this one. Like, fuck yeah. And I was given a warning, and I'll get into that in a second, but dissection. The Somberlin, fuck yes, finally, once more, Back in My Life is one of my favorite, favorite slabs of second wave Scandinavian black metal. Fuck yes. Some people will call dissection death metal, I kind of, they're on the borderlines of black and death metal, whatever you want to fucking call it, let's just call it awesome and dissection the somber one is just one of those releases that at first it starts out kind of like a typical black metal release but then like midway through the like, first track there's this very very um i can't even describe how it made me feel the first time I actually heard it, but I was by myself and I was driving to Philadelphia real late one night. Like I had just got my driver's license, I was like 19 and um, I had just gotten the CD and I was driving across this bridge during a thunderstorm and during like the middle of Black Horizons this one part came on and I legit like could feel like the hair on my arm starting to raise as I was getting goose prickles and whatnot. Goose flesh, goose bumps, whatever you want to call it. But it legit like really, really affected me and really led to a, you know, very loving relationship with dissection. Up until, you know, they released John from jail and kind of put out two very, very mediocre releases, and we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how amazing this record is. But I was left with a warning about this press right here. First off, you might be asking, where's that awesome Necro Lord art? Maybe it's on the inside. Huh. So... 
cover art by Necro Lord, cover concept by John and Necro Lord, and final art by Lucas Ziba. Hmm. Now I actually hit up Dennis asking, "Hey, did this come with um, you know, a cover sleeve or something?" And he was like, "Dude, like." <laughs> One of the reasons I sent it to you is I knew it would be in better hands, and secondly, it's all fucked up production-wise. And I was just like, ah, it can't be that bad, can it? Okay, now, to me, this is one of the most important Swedish extreme music releases ever, along with Storm of the Lights Bane as well by Dissection. That's one of those arguments, what's a better record? The Sombralin or Storm of the Lights Bane? It's one of those, you never really know. Like, I used to have an awesome version where it had the, uh, Where Dead Angels Lie, and that combined, it was fucking, I used, I was a big, big Dissection fan. I remember snagging the demo comp and everything when it first came out, and just, I love this stuff, like, but, seriously, to me, this is one of the most important Scandinavian second wave black metal releases that's not from Norway and shit. So, on this remaster and reissue, what the fuck happened? Seriously, where is some of the most iconic and amazing artwork when it comes to, you know, Scandinavian black metal? And when it comes to dissection to begin with, like, to me, that artwork that they had always stood out and was, like, kind of just as important as the music. And the fact that they even mention the cover art but don't show it should kind of give you a heads up that whoever released this really didn't give a fuck. Because I don't know much about condensing, you know, and remixing something, but I do know this is something that deserves a double LP remixed at 45 RPMs treatment. Not this fucking thing. Like, trust me, the B-side is great. It's amazing. But this could have been situated so much... All right, just listen to this, and if you know anything about production, then you can probably help me out here. All right, we start things off with Black Horizons, one of the best songs on the album. 8 minutes and 10 seconds, followed by the title track, The Somberlin, at 7 minutes and 4 seconds. Then we go into the instrumental, Crimson Towers, followed by the 6 minute and 38 second, A Land Forlorn, followed by Heaven's Damnation at 4 minutes and 43 seconds, and then on track 6 we have Frozen at 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Now that's just the A side. But now the B side. Into infinite obscurity. 1 minute and 4 seconds. In the cold winds of nowhere. 4 minutes and 19 seconds. The grief prophecy slash shadows over a lost kingdom. 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Mistress of the bleeding sorrow. 4 minutes and 33 seconds, and Where Feathers Fell, 43 seconds. Total length, 45 minutes and 40 seconds of pure, satanic, Swedish black metal. But why am I complaining so much about the production? Why am I complaining about there not being the original artwork? It's because this is something I hold very close to my heart, especially when it comes to black metal. Dissection was one of those bands that got me back into the genre. And for them to, you know, kind of not really care about cosmetics, like, 
I don't care about the color or anything, but like, I just want you all to hear the difference between the A and B side of things. And if you know anything about engineering, music, if you can explain to me why this is the way it is, please do help. But for right now, I'm going to throw the A side of things on and then the B side and let you guys hear the difference. So you can hear why I was like, what the fuck? But just know the B side sounds fucking sick. Oh my God, I was squeezing invisible fruit. Oh, it was great. But let's do this. All right. Now this is the B side of things, starting off with Into Infinite Obscurity, and then In the Cold Winds of Nowhere. What the fuck? You hear how loud that is now? I love it. Dude, this record is so fucking good. I, I, I wish I could show you the original artwork. It's so fucking sick. Ugh. But still, as long as I have the music, I'm fucking happy, but it's very strange. Like, I really don't know what they were thinking. Like, maybe, you know, it would have cost more to send this back to the printing press, or who the fuck knows, but all you really need to know is fucking dissection, the Sombrelin. But this reissue is on Black Lodge Records, distributed by Sound Pollution Distribution. Tighten up. Here. See? Now I have to yell to talk to you. This is full volume. Why is the production so different? But... It's dissection, it's the Sombrolin, it's in my hands, it doesn't matter, fuck yeah. Alright, so dissection the Sombrolin, while it's one of the best releases of the 90s, especially when it comes to Swedish black metal or, you know, Swedish melodic black metal, whatever you want to call this. Dissection of Sombrolin is a grade A, 10 out of 10 black metal release. It's so fucking good, so iconic. Hell, without this record, you would not have Watain. You would, you would have so many bands without that Swedish melodic sensibility. I mean, sure, someone probably would have picked it up, like at, like at the gates, I mean, they did share a practice space, but I feel like Dissection just kind of do that melodic, blackened death metal thing better than anyone else ever has. R.I.P. John. Hail Satan. Thank you so much, Dennis, for hooking us up. But, yeah, if you guys know anything about production and can give some answers to why this sounds the way it does on the A side, that would be great, but we were blasting Infester to the Depths and Degregation on Head Split Records. Amazing, amazing early 90s death metal and some amazing, amazing Swedish black metal that is the Sombrelin. One of my favorite songs on here, Frozen, just fuck yeah. But if you're a fan of black metal, yeah, you can't go wrong here. This is a bona fide fucking classic. As always, though, thanks for watching. You guys fucking rule. Peace.